Hello, this is Jamie Romero with Batkey Howell, and today we're going to be talking about downloading and installing the Java Development Kit. You can find the Java download at the java.sun.com website. On this site, there's a Downloads menu option, and we're going to choose Java SE, Java Standard Edition. On the page that comes up, we're going to be presented with several different options uh, for download here. One of them is downloading the JRE, another gives us the choice to download the JDK. The JRE is the Java runtime environment. That's what you would download if all you need to do is run Java programs. The JDK, that's the Java development kit. We use that if we want to not only run programs, but also write Java programs. I'll go with the JDK. The next page is going to give me the choice as to which platform I want to download the JDK for. In my case, I'm sitting on Windows here, so I'll go ahead and choose the Windows platform, and I'll click the Download button. This will actually load up a or, or bring up a dialog that'll ask me if I want to log in. I also have the choice to skip this step. Finally, we're going to see a dialog that asks us to save the file, and I'll go ahead and click Save. And this is going to take a while. It's a rather large download. So I'm going to pause the recording for a few moments. And when this completes, I'll be right back. OK, the download has completed. And I now have an executable that I need to, to run. So I'll double click on the executable. And uh, it'll launch the Java installer. Uh, each step through the installation, I'll pretty much just choose Next. Uh, and I'll probably be pausing the uh, video uh, throughout just so that you're not watching the install happen uh, a little bit at a time. So first thing we have is a welcome screen here. The welcome screen turns into a, a screen that asks us if we want to accept a license. I'll go ahead and click on accept. And then asks us if we want to customize the installation. I'll just choose all the defaults and click next. And then the installation will start. I'll pause this uh, video for a moment and I'll be right back once the installation is complete. Well, partway through the installation, it does pop up a dialog asking me uh, for the destination folder of where I wanted to install Java. And program files Java is a typical place where we want to have this stored. So again, I'm just going to choose Next and allow it to continue on. OK, the uh, download or the installation has completed. I'll click on Finish. And it'll actually pop up a web browser asking me to register. Um, I'll dismiss that, and what I'll do instead is show you what got installed. And so going back to my file explorer here, if I look under the program files directory, I should now have a Java subdirectory. And in this Java directory, I've got both a JRE and a JDK installed. In the JDK, we have, I want to show you a bin directory. In this bin directory, there's a couple files I want to call your attention to. One is called javac.exe. That's the Java compiler. The other is called java.exe. That is the Java runtime. We use that to run a Java program. And so momentarily, I'm going to be adding this path, C drive program files java backslash jdk160 underscore 20 backslash bin. Uh, we'll be adding that to our path environment variable so that uh, if we want to invoke Java or Java C, we can do so directly on the command line. So uh, maybe I'll capture the first half of this, do a control C, copy that to my clipboard, and then I'll right click on the My Computer icon, go to Properties, and I'm on XP. So on the Advanced tab under Environment Variables, I have the choice of configuring environment variables. I'm going to create a new system variable. I'll call it Java Home. And for the value of that variable, I'll paste in the location of the Java installation. I'm also going to modify, so edit, not new, but edit the path environment variable. And I'd like to prepend the Java installation location to this, this environment variable. Actually, I'm going to take Java Home and put a backslash bin on there because the bin directory is where Java and Java C were located. Uh, I'm on Windows, and so on Windows, we use percent signs on either side of an environment variable. So that says take whatever stored in Java Home and substitute that uh, value for this. We have a backslash on Windows to separate uh, the different uh, directories. Bin is the, whoops, bin is the, uh, the directory we saw Java and Java C in. 
and we use semicolons to separate path values uh, in our environment variables on Windows. If you were on uh, Linux or Unix, you'd use colons to separate uh, each entry. The reason I prepend here, uh, it's just out of habit. I've been on lots and lots of, Java, of, of systems where there have been many Java installations. And by putting this at the beginning of the path, I know exactly which version of Java I'll get uh, by default. The first one it finds is the, first, is the one you'll be running when you type in a Java or Java C command on a command line. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK several times here. And just to make sure that everything's working, I'm going to bring up a command prompt. And I'll simply click on Start, then Run, and type in CMD to pull this up. And I type Java-Version. That'll give me a feel for whether it actually found the Java installation. And sure enough, it did. We have version 1.60 uh, underscore 20, so update 20 is on this system. Well, that concludes our video. Uh, please stay tuned. There's going to be many other videos in this series. Um, thank you very much for watching.